Okay, guys, we are going to begin chapter nine. I do not want that. I'm going to start it over again. So we are going to begin chapter nine. Um, as we start on flexible budgets. How did you guys do last week with our budgeting? Honestly, that was the easiest chapter for me for the whole thing. Was it? And what did you think? It's good. Good. All is well? Okay, so guys, this week we're going to focus on flexible budgeting. So, flexible budgeting as we change um, um, quantities, how that, or um, different products, how that's going to affect ultimate budgeting. budgeting. So variance analysis circle. So here you basically see these performance reports and you look at the variances, as a result of those variances, you can um, have some issues. You identify the root causes, take the actions, and then go and do the next period's operations. How do we go about creating a flexible budget? Now, in this case, we're going to do this with what we call just one cost driver. Planning budgets are prepared for a single planned level of activity. What we're going to do here is when oftentimes, I mean, a lot of times there's more than one cost driver, but in our case, we're just going to focus here on one cost driver. Um, Performance evaluation is difficult when actual activity differs from the planned level of activity, which makes sense. So um, with these flexible budgets, you've got to have, you can have changes, but there still needs to be some type of relevant range, meaning with your, the specific factory, with the equipment you have, you can only produce up to a certain relevant range um, numbers. Show costs that should have been incurred at the actual level of activity. So we have our apples to apples approach. Hey Yusuf, help managers control costs and ultimately we're going to look at per per improving performance evaluation. Good old Larry's Lawn Service. This um, company provides lawn care in a planned community. All lawns are approximately the same size. At the end of May, Larry prepared his June budget based on mowing 500 lawns. Since all of the lawns are similar in size, Larry felt that the number of lawns mowed in a month would be the best way to measure his overall activity for, a biz, um, for his business. So he's just looking at number of lawns as his cost driver you know um that's he's estimating 75 bucks a lawn and he's estimating in june he is going to mow 500 lawns so there you see the revenue you see the wages he's got some fixed wages and then he's got some variable per lawn. He's got variable expenses of gas and supplies per lawn, equipment maintenance per lawn, and then he's got some overall just overhead fixed costs. So you see here what he's planning for the month of June, 500 lawns at 75 bucks a lawn. But what actually came in was 550 lawns. His revenue 
He was planning on it being 37.5. It's actually sitting at 43,000. And then you see the wages, the gas, the equipment. So he was hoping for 500 lawns and a $5,000 operating income. He ended up with 550 lawns and a $6,400 operating income. Now, what you, he, we're doing here is we look at the planned budget. We then compare it with actual. And from actual to planned, we'll see what's favorable and what's unfavorable. So you see with the revenue, of course, that's favorable. But when you look at the wages and salaries and the gas and supplies, what we budgeted versus what's actual is showing unfavorable. But remember, guys, we were budgeting for 500 lawns. Of course, we're going to spend more because we had 550 lawns, okay? Um, the equipment maintenance and the shop utilities are favorable, which means we spent less than what we planned. And our insurance is unfavorable because we spent more. Ultimately, our expenses are, in, are up. They're more than what we planned. And but again, we mowed 50 more lawns. So we did have more revenue and ultimately more net operating income. The favorable variance occurs when actual revenue is greater than budgeted. Unfavorable happens because actual costs are greater than budgeted costs. And favorable variances occur because actual costs are less than budgeted costs. But here's the question. Just because some of these are unfavorable, does that mean Larry did a bad job? No. So, um, it doesn't necessarily mean good or bad. Since these variances here are favorable, does that mean he's done a good job at controlling costs? Not necessarily. We can answer these questions because the actual level of activities greater than what we planned for the activity level to be. Therefore, actual variable costs are likely to be higher than planned variable costs, regardless of how efficient and how much of a control Larry had on anything. So, how much of the cost variances are due to higher activity and how much are due to cost control? That's the reason we want flexible budgets, so we can alter the budget based on changes in activity. To answer the question, we need to flex the planning budget so we can accommodate what really happened. To flex a budget, we need to know that total variable cost will always change in proportion to changes in activity. Total fixed cost should remain unchanged within a certain relevant range. So for Larry, by preparing what we call a flexible budget, we will change the budget to accommodate the number of lawns he actually mowed. He was planning on doing 500, he actually mowed 550. So the revenue should be 41,250. And then the var various expenses, those variable expenses, should match with what actually was performed. So in this case, you see that the planned budget for total expenses are at 34,600 with net operating income of $6,650. What should the total wages and salaries cost be in a flexible budget for 600 lawns? And I'll push this back here so you can see what should they be for 600 lawns. Wouldn't it be 30 times 600, which would be 18,000 plus the 5,000, right? Shouldn't it be 23,000? Using his 
um, 30 bucks a lawn. Guys, back here. See, a fixed, of, a flat of 5,000 plus 30 bucks a lawn should be 23,000. Now, that's how we are going to prepare a flexible budget. Now let's interpret the various variances. An activity variance arises due to the difference in the actual level of activity and the level of activity that's included in the planning budget. So looking at Larry's lawn service, let's look at the variances here. Here you see we have the planning budget to be 500 lawns. The flexible budget was 550. So the variances from the planning to the flexible budget, some of those costs look unfavorable, okay? Because of the activity increasing, our costs are gonna also increase. Make sense? Activity and revenue increased by 10%, but net operating income increases by more than 10% due to those fixed costs that were already sitting on hand. Okay? So basically what we're doing is we're looking to see between the actual budget and the flex budget how those variances are affected. Now we're going to look at interpreting these variances. Actual revenue versus the flexible budget revenue is called a revenue variance. Actual cost versus the flexible budget cost is going to be a difference in the spending variance. That makes sense. One's revenue, one's expenses. Let's look at uh, Larry to compute the revenue and the spending variances. So here, by going from the flexible budget to the actual, we see an increase of $1,750 in revenue from what we flexed it to be to what actually was. That's favorable because actual is higher than the budgeted. Now, in terms of our costs, this is what we call the spending variance. You see it's going to be unfavorable if the actual cost are greater than the budgeted in the flex cost. So you see a couple um, are higher than the budgeted. Excuse me. The, um, a couple are higher than the budgeted and a couple are lower, but we call these spending variances because we're comparing actual to the flexible budget. Now, the performance report. Here, we're going to take Larry's and look at this performance report showing the actual results to compare it to the flexible budget. Then we're going to take the flexible budget and compare that to what we call the planning budget. From actual to flexible are our revenue and spending variances. From our flexible to our planning are what we call our activity variances. Okay? Because remember, the difference between the planning and the flexible has to do with changes in activity. Okay, so you see when we compare the actual to the, the flexible and we've got our revenue and spending variances, 
We're comparing actual results to the flexible. When we are looking at the flexible to the planning, we're comparing the, what the actual flexible numbers are to the planning budget to show favorable or unfavorable. In this case, with activity variances, that's a change because we added, with the flexible budget, 50 more lawns. So we're going to get 75 bucks more per lawn, but our costs are also going to go up because we have variable costs associated per lawn. Okay? Then when we look at the revenue and spending variances, again, we're going to take our actual results versus our flex budget. Because our actual were greater, we've got a favorable revenue variance of $1,750. You can do this same thing in many nonprofit organizations. So you can look at what you're budgeting for some of these various costs versus what actually gets flexed, be it per the number of students um, from what you planned to what actually did come in would be your plan budget versus your flexible budget, and then with actual costs coming in here too. So you can have um, fixed and variable elements in these uh, performance reports. Performance reports are usually based with various cost centers. These reports should be prepared using the same principles except for the fact that these reports will not contain revenue or operating income variances. So right now we're dealing with one cost driver. Should we look at a problem dealing with one cost driver? Do you want to do that or do you want to keep going on? Okay, is that okay? Yes, I'm sorry. In McGraw Hill, So we are going to look here Whoops, I didn't want eight, I want nine. Okay. Two would be better than one. Okay, let's let's do um, number two here. You've just been hired by FAB Corporation, the manufacturer of a revolutionary new garage door opening device. The president asked you to review the company's costing system and do what you can to help us get better control of our manufacturing overhead costs. You find the company's never used a flexible budget and you suggest preparing such a budget would be an excellent first step in overhead planning and controls. So right now we see 
the various costs. We see utilities are a fixed amount of 20,600 plus 10 cents per machine hour. We see maintenance, 40,000 plus a buck 60 per machine hour. Supplies, 30 cents per machine hour. Indirect labor, 130,000 plus 70 cents per machine hour. And depreciation of 70,000, okay? So, the first thing we need to do is calculate the activity variances for March. So, we see with utilities, we've got utilities of um, the planning budget was going to be Here, let me just look here a minute. Inder, indicate the effect of each variance by selecting favorable or unfavorable or none. During March, the company worked 26,000 machine hours and produced 15,000 units. The company originally planned to work 30,000 machine hours during March. So we plan on 30,000 machine hours. So we, what we plan here, we'll do the flexible, we'll do the planning budget, and the variance. Okay? So we planned on 30,000 machine hours but we really only did 26,000 machine hours, right? For utilities, the um, we're doing the planning versus the um, flexible. So we planned to work 30,000 machine hours, right? So 30,000 machine hours was what we planned for, and yet we only did 26,000. So what would our planning budget have been? 20,600 20, plus 30,000 times 10 cents? 20,600, let me just see. Um, 10 cents times 30,000 machine hours plus 20,600. So it should be 23,6. Because we only did 26,000 machine hours, what should it be? It should be 26 times 10 cents plus 20,600. Shouldn't the flex be 23,200? So the flexible to be 23,2 and the planning to be 23,6. That would be favorable, right? In this case, this would be a favorable amount because the flexible is less than the planning by 400, right? Does that make sense? Be um. Because what we're doing is we're comparing flexible to planning budget, okay? Now, the maintenance, we know that maintenance is uh, 160 per machine hour plus 40,000. So if we planned on, I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, 40,000 plus 160. 
So we should do maintenance, planning, 30,000 times 160 plus how much is the fixed? I'm sorry, what? 40,000. 40,000. So what did I do wrong? The planning should be 88,000. What would the flexible be? What is it? I'll just, you guys said 81, what? Okay, so is this favorable? Favorable by how much? Okay, one second. It's 88 minus the 81.6. Wouldn't it be favorable 6,400? Okay. Favorable. Now supplies, we've got 30 cents per machine hour. So 30 cents per machine hour, if we were at 30 times 30,000 machine hours versus 26,000 times Would that be favorable? Now again, all these are favorable because our activity actually was less. Make sense? So here is our, what did I call this? Service? Supplies. Supplies. And the next one here is indirect labor and depreciation. Indirect labor and depreciation. So indirect labor We've got 130,000 times 70 cents per machine hour. What would that be, guys? For planning budget. I'm sorry, what? Thank you, 151. And then the flexible, 148, 200. Again, it's favorable because it's uh, less activity. And then our depreciation was the same no matter what, okay? So that's a zero variance. So 2,800. So what was our supplies, guys? 1,200 favorable, and then indirect labor, 2,800 favorable and depreciation, there was no, none, right? Okay, so our total here, 68, 78, 10,800. And this is favorable, right? You agree? Okay, now, Now what they want us to do is compare actual to the flexible budget, okay? So we have our flexible budget here. Our flexible budget is here. But if we took actual, we have some of those actual figures up here. We've got actual utilities 24-2. And 78.1, okay, so we've got 24.2, 24.2, 1, supplies, 8,400, 149.6, 8,400, 
149.6 and depreciation. Uh, seventy one five. Okay, so in here I'm going to show the variances. Okay, so the variances here, the actual versus the flexible. Um, excuse me. These are spending variances. That's unfavorable. A thousand, isn't it? And maintenance, wouldn't that be favorable, 3,500? You see what I'm doing? I'm comparing actual to flexible budget. I'm so sorry, 71.5. Five. So with the negative, those are unfavorable. With the um, the supplies, excuse me, the maintenance, it's favorable. So here we've got um, the utilities. Okay, but what am, are we doing here? Calculate the activity variances for March. Uh, okay, we already did that. So the next, this one is we're going to do the spending variances. So wouldn't utilities be a thousand unfavorable? Maintenance is thirty five hundred favorable. A thousand unfavorable. This one would be thirty five hundred favorable. The supplies would be six hundred unfavorable. This one would be fourteen hundred unfavorable, and depreciation was fifteen hundred. You said. Overall, where are we standing? Well, the thirty-five hundred is favorable, so we've got sixteen, three, forty-five hundred unfavorable, thirty-five hundred favorable the net is a thousand unfavorable right right does that make sense how we're figuring that Yes, no. Okay. Now, let's see for three. Okay, now this has the same concept here. We've got the actual results which are being are put in here and it tells us in November the pizzeria budgeted for 1200 pizzas at an average selling price of 1350 per pizza and for 180 deliveries. So our planning budget would be that and then those were the actual results. So what we need to do is fill in the information for the planning budget based on budgeting 1,200 pizzas at an average selling price of 1350 What would that be? 1,200 pizzas at 1350 per pizza is what? I'm sorry, what? 1,602? So what we need is to be able to figure out the um, revenues here. So our revenues 
for okay th we're just doing activity we're not dealing with uh, money yet so our planning budget here was 1200 um, pizzas our deliveries were 180 deliveries okay and what were our um, revenues planning on being with the pizzas and the deliveries thirteen dollars and fifty cents per pizza times twelve hundred pizzas are is how much sixteen two hundred would be our um, revenues here then we've got various expenses so our budget was planning twelve hundred pizzas at these various costs let's try to look at putting these in i'm going to run to the restroom real quick and then we'll fill them in okay guys remember we're just doing the planning budget right now then we'll do the flexible budget Okay, guys, so for our flexible pizza ingredients are $3.80 per pizza times 1,200 pizzas would be how much? 380 times 1,200? 4,560. Our kitchen staff, 5,220. Um, our utilities, 690. Utilities are 690, okay. Okay, 690. Um, our delivery person, Oops. 
our vehicle, our equipment depreciation, our rent, and our miscellaneous. Okay, our miscellaneous. Okay. Now, if we look at the flexible budget, how many pizzas did we actually make? 1,240. And the deliveries we actually made? 174, right? So our revenue should be 1240 times 1350 a pizza is what? 16740. 16740. Our pizza ingredients 1240 times was it 3 bucks or 350? Times 380 is 4712 kitchen staff yep that's all fixed um, utilities no this is just the flex flexible budget so the flexible budget is changing the activities remember the actual budget is where we do our spending and cost variances okay so the flexible budget is just actual numbers times our budgeting figures so what were our utilities Six ninety-two delivery person. Six oh nine. Okay, Dry, uh, delivery vehicle. Eight oh one equipment depreciation. Rent and any miscellaneous one thousand six. So now we need to go back and look at these activity variances and see what's favorable or unfavorable. In this case, with revenues, if our flexible budget is greater than our planning budget, then that's favorable of um, 540 bucks, okay? With our costs, if our flexible is greater than our planning, then it's unfavorable. Okay, so in this case, our ingredients, we'd show unfavorable. This is unchanged. This shows none. Uh, this is unfavorable. This would be favorable. Our delivery vehicle is favorable unchanged none unfavorable unfavorable so then we just go in and plug in these different figures here um, if the flexible is greater than the planning that would be unfavorable and we put in the, the difference. So 
4650 from 4712 is what, guys? One fifty two. And then here's a two dollar unfavorable. Six oh nine versus six thirty twenty one. Eight oh one versus um eight ten nine six uh thirty. No, that's one thirty. And then from fifteen ninety five versus eleven eighty five. Overall, the net operating income is favorable because this isn't an expense. You know, we had the activity variances. This is overall favorable of four ten. Yep, four ten. Now over here are our revenue and spending variances. Okay, so do you see our actual revenue was greater than our flexible budget? So that's going to be favorable, 680. If our costs, the actual costs are greater than the flexible budget, then it's going to be unfavorable. Okay, these are unfavorable. This is no change. This is favorable. No change. No change. Favorable. Unfavorable. And overall, this is going to be favorable. Does that make sense? So the pizza ingredients, if they were actually forty nine eighty five and the flexible was forty seven twelve, that would be unfavorable by how much? Two hundred and seventy three. Kitchen staff. Utilities. Two ninety two. Um, delivery vehicle. Um, rents, no, the same. Miscellaneous. And then total expenses are unfavorable by. And this is 252. Does it make sense how to do this, guys? Pretty darn straightforward. Okay. Um... Why? Oh, here we are. So, going back here, prepare a planning budget and a flexible budget with more than one cost driver. So, sometimes we're just being very simplistic using one cost driver. So, basically, by adding more than one cost driver, the cost formulas can be adjusted to recognize multiple cost drivers. So now if we go back to Larry and as the lawns, because the time required for edging and trimming is different for different lawns, Larry decided to add an additional cost driver for the time required for edging and trimming. Larry estimated the additional hours and developed a new planning and flexible budget that includes the second cost driver in both his revenue and in his expense budget formulas. Now he's got the number of lawns, he's got number of hours, and then what he's done, his wages, his gasoline, and his equipment is varied based on number of hours, 
and the number of lawns, okay? So he's got them um, showing up as two cost drivers in the revenue section and in three of the expense categories. So here we show the, let's just look here a minute, 29 plus 25, number of hours is 100. Now, what changed here is he was estimating 500 in the planning. What actually came out were 550 hours, so the flexible budget will adjust for the activity. Okay? Prepare a performance report with more than one cost driver that combines activity variances and revenue and spending variances. So again, we're going to show more than one cost driver. We've got not just the number of lawns, but we're also taking into account the number of hours. So um, the planning budget to the flexible budget, we kept the number of hours the same. The actual results ended up being um, 200 hours. You see that? So, in this case, we are, from the planning to the flexible, we're adjusting for the number of lawns, but we didn't here adjust for the number of hours, which is odd to me. That the flexible budget does adjust for the number of lawns. For the number of hours, we are not um, showing that in the flexible budget. We are only showing for the number of lawns there. Hmm. So, basically, we're doing everything the same. We're just adding another cost driver to it. So, if we go, here we are, to, let's check number five. Now let's see if number four. We've got again, we've just got lessons as the um, the variable here the driver. So um, we can do another one if you if you guys would like. Do you all want to do another one? You feel good. Emily says no. How are you guys doing? Let's take number five, okay? You guys can handle that on your own. Let's look at number five, okay? I'm going to um, exit this and just We'll look at this number five together. Ah. Oh, come on. What can I do that?
Well, guys, I think we're not. Oh, there I, it is right there. So I'm trying to get this screen. There, back to instructor view. Okay, so that's what I wanted. So let's just look at the number five here, guys. Number five, oh, excuse me, not the homework, number five in chapter nine. No, it's back on though. Okay, so for number five, guys, the last one we'll go over here. Frank, supervisor of the Fremont Corporation's machining department, was upset after being reprimanded for his department's poor performance over the month. The department's cost control report was given below. So it showed the planning budget, then the actual results. I just can't understand all of these unfavorable variances. Weston complained to the supervisor. When the boss called me in, I thought he was going to give me a pat on the back because I know my department worked more efficiently last month than ever before. Instead, he tore me apart. I thought for a minute it might be over the supplies that were stolen out of our warehouse, but they only amounted to a couple hundred dollars. And look at this report. Everything shows unfavorable. Direct labor wages and supplies are variable costs. Supervision and depreciation are fixed, and maintenance and utilities are mixed. The fixed component of the budget maintenance cost is $92,000. The fixed component of the budgeted utilities cost is $11,500. So you see the machine hours that they planned were $35,000, but they actually had $38,000 of machine hours. They budgeted thirty-five. dollars they actually had 38. Um, complete the performance report. So, but they basically show you the planning and the actual. What we need to do is create in the flexible portion, the flexible budget. We need to create, in, create the variances for both. And basically, the variable cost per machine hour is obtained by dividing the total variable cost from the planning budget by 35,000 machine hours. The variable cost per machine hour is obtained by subtracting the fixed cost given from the planning budget and then dividing the result by 35,000. So if you see it this way and you do the spending variances, if you're just taking the plan planned um, planning budget to actual, but if you show what really these spending variances are, um, they're favorable. You can see here the direct labor hour is favorable, the maintenance here is favorable. Overall, the total is favorable here. So what the boss was trying to say to him was in really not accurate, okay? Because, again, you need to take into account activity as it relates to a budget. When changes of activity occur, you need to take that into account so the numbers don't get skewed. Any questions, guys, before we end?